The one-year anniversary of the West explosion is later this week, and a big question remains, are we any safer than we were a year ago? Well, Fox Sports' Becky Oliver has been doing some digging, looking at the regulations, and Becky, you say that it just really depends on who you ask. Sure does. Many believe moving too quickly re will result in rules and regulations that will hurt businesses and farmers, but still others say the protections are simply not in place and the public is at risk. One thing is for sure, the people of West are recovering. It's a community on the mend. You can hear the sounds of progress, of healing. We're removing debris, uh, separating rocks so they can mow. These Allen students are spending their spring break lending a hand to the massive cleanup still underway in West. Volunteers and work crews are everywhere, rebuilding. But the bigger job is making sure it never happens again. And regulatory change has been almost non-existent. We begin with breaking news. A massive explosion at a fertilizer plant near the town of West. The explosion at the fertilizer storage plant last year killed 15 people, 12 of them volunteer firefighters. The blast injured another 300 people. Hey, come here, come here. Hey. And while the cause of the fire is still under investigation, we do know a lot about the factors involved. The ammonium nitrate was stored in wooden bins that were combustible. The building had no sprinkler system, and there is still no county or statewide fire code. We're not looking back, we're going forward. Mayor Tommy Musco was one of the first responders. We still have no regulation as far as storage of the ammonium nitrate. Still no regulation about that, how it's stored. Uh, you still don't have any regulations about sprinklers, uh, liability insurance. Those are some pretty big holes. They have to be careful because of one, one, one thing. I mean, we need regulation, yes. But if you overregulate it, then the cost of that is going to go right back to the farmer. Muska says West wants and needs another fertilizer plant, hopefully one with newer and safer technology. But he's like almost everyone we spoke to. He's opposed to overregulation. We didn't have all the facts. We didn't know where all the ammonium nitrate was in the state. Fire Marshal Chris Conley has been traveling the state. The apartment complex is gone. The nursing home is gone. He's quick to point out he has no authority to impose any changes. He can only encourage best practices. In other words, self-policing. So far, inspections have been only voluntary. The state has identified 96 facilities that store ammonium nitrate. There's now an interactive website where you can put in your zip code and learn if ammonium nitrate is stored near you. Connolly says his office has determined more than half of those facilities still have the old wooden storage structures like West. And that's a concern, and so uh, that's not uncommon, what we're finding across the nation. How many of those have sprinkler systems? None. None. It's definitely irresponsible. Elena Kraft says that's absurd. We know the, the safeguards that should be in place that are not in place. These are not new things. Kraft is a health scientist with the Environmental Defense Fund. She's frustrated by the lax approach to safety and says there are no guarantees that what happened in West won't happen again. Well, it's irresponsible on the part of the state legislature. It's irresponsible on the part of our state leaders not to be taking actions. This has been a Groundhog Day issue. We see things over and over again. Back in January, the House Speaker instructed a panel here at the legislature to start digging into safety issues, everything from inspections to enforcement, and then to get back with specific recommendations on how to reduce the likelihood of damage, injury, or death. Representative Joe Pickett is chairman of the Texas House Homeland Security Committee. When we asked why there has not been a single meeting since the speaker ordered the review, Pickett rolled his eyes. Well, there's a thing in Texas called elections. Uh, members have been campaigning. Again, I'm not big on knee-jerk reactions. Pickett says he is confident he'll have a bill to introduce by the time the legislature convenes in 2015, almost two years after the explosion. These explosions keep on happening. It doesn't necessarily mean new laws, you're right, but it certainly means we need to enforce the laws we have.
And the feds are also tackling the issue. Senator Boxer is making chemical safety a priority. But in Washington, D.C., the wheels turn slowly. Back in West, this community is roaring back. New homes are popping up. Growth is all around. But at least one group questions if Texas will move forward and learn a lesson from the past. I think the problem is not necessarily that we don't know what to do. It's that Texas has refused to implement those common sense safeguards. And so I'm not sure that um, what the federal agencies do is going to make a difference in this state. Now, Pickett's Homeland Security Committee held a hearing in Austin this morning. Lawmakers heard from reps from all different sorts of agencies. They testified about everything from better training to storage, insurance and inspections. Pickett says he is concerned about those wooden structures still out there and the state's lack of authority to go in and say, change that. All right, so concerned about them. So what's the plan to do then with those structures? Well, one of the suggestions brought up today was to give these companies three years to switch over to safer technology like concrete bins and in the meantime, install sprinkler systems. It looks like maybe that's where they're headed, but lots of ideas brought up today. All right, Becky, thank you.